Let's go to Capitol Hill now, where House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is holding her weekly briefing. Let's listen. Well, that work period, uh, laser, laser focused on our strengthening America agenda as we honor our oath, support and defend the Constitution, support and defend the Constitution, and promote, protect the American people. Uh, members uh, of Congress will honor our oaths and do our pat patriotic duty to find the facts as Special Counsel Mueller comes to testify before Congress next week. This is about the dignity of the process. It's about patriotism. It's not about partisanship or politics. The Mueller report revealed that the Russians waged a sweeping and systemic attack uh, on our elections, yet the president tells us it was a hoax and suggests that he would welcome Russian interference again. A green light. Uh, the testimony, this testimony will ensure that many more people will read the report and see the facts for themselves. Our national security is being threatened and the American people deserve answers. Yesterday, uh, we had a classified briefing on election security from the administration. Uh, as we investigate, the House will also legislate honoring our, our oath with bold actions to deliver results for the American people. And, and to that end, tomorrow, uh, the House uh, will pass a strong bipartisan defense authorization bill. Uh, we are debating it now, have for a couple of days, uh, a bill that advances a strong, smart, and strategic national defense. The legislation keeps America strong with vital action to improve the, the economic security and well-being of our servicemen and women and their families. It keeps America safe with critical steps uh, to promote collaboration with our allies, uh, harden our defenses against hostile foreign powers, and meet the challenges of the future, including the climate crisis, which is a national security issue. And it keeps America smart by reaffirming Congress's constitutional oversight responsibility over the president's military actions overseas, including action related to potential action against Iran. The, uh, I want to commend our um, chairman of the committee, Adam Smith. He's done a spectacular job, and the members of the committee. And really, he in incorporated the views of so many of our members into the legislation. It also keeps Americans humane uh, by protecting children in this way, prohibiting DOD funding from being used to house unaccompanied children near the border, and requiring the Department of Defense to submit certification that any housing provided to unaccompanied child, children meets Department of uh, Homeland Security standards, including those provided in the Flores settlement. We must take every action we can, give, take every opportunity we have uh, to end this child abuse and improve the health care, safety, and well-being of children in custody. In the coming weeks, we'll bring to the floor, just in the very near future, a, a legislation led by, under leadership of Chairman Thompson, the chair of our Homeland Security Committee, uh, but also uh, work of the Judiciary Committee, legislation of Representative Escobar on accountability and on Raul Ruiz, uh, Representative Raul Ruiz, who's also a public health uh, physician uh, for best practices uh, based on based on uh, training for CBP and ICE officers and a um, uh, ban on separation of families, except when it is in the best interest of the child. It's very, very specific medical care standards led by Mr. Roos uh, to ensure health and safety of children and adults in custody. Some of this, <laughs> not the accountability piece is fresh and new and something that sprang from the visits, uh, the visit that Congresswoman Escobar uh, hosted over the past weekend. But the provisions of Mr. Ruiz's bill are some of, is more, but most of it is what we wanted the Senate to accept uh, before the break. They didn't, they, they would have, I think uh, Mitch McConnell would have been happy if we had no bill at all. That's what he was taunting for, but we wouldn't go that place. This is not, in, it's, again, this is not issues. This is not legislation. This is about values. And I, our members did hear this when they went home. Whatever they may think about immigration and many other aspects of it, they all universally came back with 
questions about the children, the American people and their decency care about the children at the border. Uh, it's about values that the president does not seem to share, and we saw this morning when he announced his heartless raids on families this coming Sunday. When he announced this before, I called, God bless you, some people of faith uh, about this, uh, uh, evangelicals who support the president for other reasons, but who have been good on immigration issues, but usually. And basically, they were very concerned that this goes too far uh, because these raids were not what they signed up for with President Trump. And I think their calls to the president made a difference. Basically, what they said to me is, on Sunday, this is the Hispanic uh, evangelicals, on Sunday, west of the Mississippi, our people are in church. And as they prepare to go to church, they feel very threatened and scared. Um, by these raids. So hopefully the president will think again about it or these groups will weigh in uh, once again. Families belong together. Every person in America has rights. These families are hardworking members of our communities and our country. This brutal action will terrorize children and tear families <coughs> apart. Uh, I, at the events that I've been going to recently in Queens and other, other places, but the Queens one was specifically geared to the census. And then the raids uh, emerged as part of that discussion. I read them this card. As ICE deportation war an ICE deportation warrant is not the same as a search warrant. If that is the only document ICE brings to a home raid, agents do not have the legal right to enter a home. If ICE agents don't have a warrant, warrant signed by a judge, a person may refuse to open the door and let them in. An administrative order of removal from ICE or immigration authorities is simply not enough. Families belong together. Everyone in our country has rights. Many of these families are mixed status families. We hope the president, we pray that the president will think about this, I would say again. Hopefully, it's again. Okay, so um, one, one more subject before we go to questions. Um, tomorrow is a very big day for us because the House will honor our values as we pass Congresswoman, uh, while well, she's chairwoman of her, her committee, Carolyn Maloney's bipartisan Never Forget the Heroes Act which renews the 9-11 Victims Com Compensation Act. Two weeks ago, America lost one of those heroes, Luis Alvarez. He was here. He came to the Capitol to testify. Then we lost him. And he's a New York Police Department detective and an advocate for whom this bill is named, uh, who died from 9-11-related cancer. With this bill, we pledge to never forget his sacrifice and that of so many. We had passed the bill earlier, closer to the time of the tragedy. We need to do it more and more fulsomely because there are so many cases of cancer uh, that we are aware of now. And so tomorrow we will do that, send it over to the Senate. Next week, the House will also act to raise the minimum wage. I'm very excited about this, uh, which will increase wages for up to 27 million Americans and lift 1.3 million people out of poverty including 600,000 children. Finally, throughout July and beyond, the House will continue its drumbeat of action for the people uh, for protecting the health and financial security of America's families. For the people, what we ran on. Lower health care costs by lowering the cost of prescription drugs, protecting the pre-existing medical condition, um, and to... Uh, uh, Increased paychecks, hopefully the president will still want to do infrastructure and cleaner government. Um, finally, throughout July, uh, on Tuesday, one last thing. On Tuesday, the courts heard oral arguments uh, in the Republicans' Texas versus the U.S. lawsuit in which the administration asked the court to eliminate every last protection and benefit provided by the Affordable Care Act. You may recall that during the campaign, the Republicans out there are saying, we're for pre-existing medical condition benefit. 
every last provision of the Affordable Care Act. While the GOP tries to destroy families' health care, Democrats are fighting to lower health care costs and protect the pre-existing condition benefit. This is so important to all of us to protect this. It's also very important in the lives of the American people because it's not just about their health, which would be enough reason. It's about their financial well-being as well, health care cost being problematic. Any questions? Let's see somebody new here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Fed Chair Jay Powell yesterday indicated that uh, the central bank may look to lower rates. There's a lot of head scratching going on as to why that may be the case. And I'm curious from your perspective, do you have any concerns that perhaps the Fed is caving into a little bit of political pressure that they're receiving from the president? Well, I have long been an advocate that the Fed should be free of any political pressure, even sometimes when in Congress there have been some exuberances uh, to uh, uh, hold the Fed accountable. I, I just think that that's wrong. I don't know what the, the Fed went into the Fed's decision, and I shouldn't um, well, until they tell us, uh, but it certainly shouldn't be because of any uh, um, weighing in of the president or the Congress of the United States. It's interesting to see the chairman's comments yesterday that he's been appointed for a four-year term and he intends to serve that long. Let's see how it goes. I have respect for, for him, but I have always had respect for the Fed under whatever auspices, whoever appointed them, that they should be independent. Yes, sir. Debt ceiling. Debt ceiling, yeah. the debt ceiling as reliable estimates that it could be breached in early September, yeah. that could be during the recess break. Yeah. Does that speak to a need to get it done before you go on break? Well, we'll just see. I mean, it, obviously, the uh, we don't want any there to be any doubt about the full faith and credit of the United States of America. The Constitution guarantees that, and, and we have always have supported that. Uh, we'll just see about the timing. We're having our back-and-forth conversations, but we understand the value of that. We also understand how important it is for us to lift the caps so that we can meet the needs of the American people, and we're having those conversations at the same time. Yes, uh, Chad. Um, Thank you for substantive questions. Such a relief. <laughs> we, we have Robert Mueller coming next. next yes. Week. Um, there seems to be a lot of consternation inside the Judiciary Committee about how what the structure will be in the timing, and whether or not members will be all members will be allowed to ask questions because of the time constraints mm -hmm. presented by Mr. Mueller. Do you see a scenario where you, as Speaker, might have to intervene and help broker some sort of an agreement because the no. members are so concerned? Why not? Well, I think that this. Uh, we're very pleased that the special counsel, the former special counsel, will be coming. To, uh, but I have confidence in our committee chairs, uh, Mr. Nadler, in terms of the Judiciary Committee, and Adam Schiff, in terms of the uh, uh, Intelligence Committee. Uh, they'll handle it very well. I wish we had more time, but I'm glad we have the time that we have. But I don't see a role. Well, you know, that, as far as timing on distribution of time in committees. I'll leave that up to the chairman. Madam yes, ma'am. On, on immigration, um, the bills that you all plan to pass in the next couple of weeks, parts of those were already included in the House's version mm -hmm. of the supplemental. And it doesn't look like they have any better prospects in the Senate than that supplemental. Not. Have you taken off the table the idea of including those bills or similar ideas in either DHS appropriations bill or in must-pass legislation like the debt ceiling or the cap steel? Well, no, I haven't, not in the latter two, but we do have many of these provisions in the appropriations bill. Uh, uh, the uh, visibility that we have by bringing them up and the accountability bill is a new, that's a new bill, as I say. Uh, th it's shameful. I mean, we, it, it, what the Senate did was shameful. What Mitch McConnell did was shameful. Uh, that doesn't mean that there weren't good things in the rest of the Senate bill, but it did not address all of the things we want to address. So we'll give them another chance. I mean, some of what they said, well, it's timing and it's too late. And it's, this, well, it's never too late to do the right thing for the children. And when it comes to children, again, I'm the lioness. I'm just going to protect our cubs. And so we're going to uh, uh, use every legislative tactic at our disposal, individual bills or within the uh, 
uh, but we do have, uh, if you read, if you've seen our appropriations bill, it has many of these provisions. And we, uh, we haven't had that discussion. No, no, no. 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 yeah. There's been a lot of debate over um, the way you and um, Representative um, Acosta Cortez are, are um, relating to each other these days. She has said that she explicitly feels she feels that you are explicitly targeting her and others. Um, what is your response? I've said what I'm going to say in the caucus. That's where my, uh, this is appropriate. And I said what I'm going to say in the caucus. They took offense because I addressed, at the request of my members, an offensive tweet that came out of one of the members' offices that referenced our blue dogs and our new Dems essentially as segregationists. Our members took offense at that. I addressed that. How they're interpreting and carrying it to another place is up to them. But I'm not going to be discussing it any further. Yes, ma'am. If I could just follow, though, briefly, you talk a lot about civility in the caucus. Yeah. This is a message that you preached yesterday to your yes. members. But many of those um, freshman members who have taken offense to your comments have found it demoralizing. Do you have a role? I said what I'm going to say. With all due respect, I don't, maybe you didn't hear what I said. I said what I'm going to say on the subject. What I said in the caucus yesterday got an overwhelming response from my members uh, because they know what the facts are and what we're responding to. We respect the value of every member of our caucus. The diversity of it all is a wonderful thing. Diversity is our strength. Unity is our power. And we have a big fight, and we're in the arena and that's all I'm going to say on the subject. So if you want to waste your question, you can waste your question. Yes. On the, Last question. On, on the ICE raids that you mentioned yeah. in your opening statement, the president gave uh, Congress two weeks to you know, come to some sort of deal on immigration, especially yeah. on the asylum laws that are in the country. Do you see any momentum to change the asylum laws or to sit down and work towards a comprehensive immigration reform package? Well, the asylum laws are what they are. In other words, it's important for people to understand what they are. Uh, they're part, we're part of a global society. And when someone comes to a country seeking asylum, and they, they, they are not breaking the law coming into the country, if they, and they have to prove their case that they have a well-founded fear of persecution. So we're, it's not a question of saying we're going to um, change the global human rights dynamic that exists. There are some uh, um, initiatives. Zoe Lofgren, who is masterful at all this, has one of them that suggests that some review of asylum seekers' uh, status could be done in country instead of traveling here. And that's one thing that I think would be appealing uh, to the administration. That doesn't necessarily mean you change the law. You just have to allocate resources to do it. In terms of comprehensive immigration, I think there's real need for it. My understanding is um, that people don't even like that term anymore. So we're talking about dream, promise, and beyond, uh, where we go with it. And um, I think that is something that we have to do. Uh, it's not something you can do in two weeks. Will you appeal to the president, though, to put off these rates? I'm going to appeal to the pe uh, people of faith, the faith-based organizations, to appeal to the president. I think that uh, they put him in office, and they have a better voice for this. I did appeal to some of them to help with the conditions for the children when we were having the back and forth before the break, but they were given the short shrift by Mitch McConnell. It was just like, He, he wasn't interested in their appeals as to what would be needed. But, uh, yeah, th that's a longer thing. I mean, the possibilities are there. Uh, he sent, um, you know this, I think it's in the public domain, so I'll be confirming it. He sent, um, is he chairman? Yeah, I guess he is a chairman uh, of the Judiciary Committee. Right. Hmm? Bam, to my office to talk about some things that we could do. And there may be some possibilities of some things that we can do. It may not be the total comprehensive, but it would address some of the points. We have to, we have to do that. I mean, we have um, principles that we've always put forth. 
We want to secure our borders. Uh, we want to be respectful of immigration policy that is fair to the American people and to newcomers coming to our country. Uh, we want to, again, have a path to citizenship. And I always like quoting Ronald Reagan, who said this, we cannot close the door. So recognizing that we're not deporting 11 million people because of status uh, of their documents or lack thereof, um, we, we did have that initial conversation. And there may be some possibilities. But every time you think you've made progress, then it doesn't necessarily happen. But we are having conversations about it, yeah. Can the President um, do a census question by executive order? Question? Well, I don't know. I mean, he has an injunction. There's an injunction and it's, um, um, that, that he just has to overcome as, as an injunction against putting citizenship on the ballot. Uh, we have been printing the census forms. June 30th was the deadline. So we're printing the forms. We fully expect the census to go forward. The president's effort to put the citizenship question, citizenship question on the census will continue to be challenged in court. The Supreme Court destroyed the administration's argument that the question was needed to support the Voting Rights Act, really, including their rationale was based on a contrived pretext. Uh, next week, the full House will vote on a resolution of criminal contempt for Attorney General Barr and Secretary Ross so we can enforce our subpoenas and get the facts. So um, he'll try all kinds of things, but he has to get around that injunction. In the meantime, we're printing the forms. And by the way, one of our issues in the um, lifting the caps is more money for the census. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.